Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. This is the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by TokenMetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. All right. And if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. I saw you guys gave us 500 likes yesterday, and I really appreciate that. Let's welcome and see who's who's on the stream today. Taz, hi there. First, as always, happy Friday. Omar, what's up? Richard from Georgia, Aiken with the notor notorious love. Always appreciate that. We have Sheldon from the Caribbean. Florida, Milwaukee, go pack. Boomer Sooner, right? Sheldon says DCA is underrated. 39K Friday. All right. Orlando in the house. Where can I get a bell at? I need it. It's called a, a C bowl, like the letter C and bowl. It's like a spiritual calming thing. Hello from Brazil, Nigeria, Mexico. Welcome. Right. Let's get that money. Yes. Dubai, London. Right? South Africa staying up late. Austin, Texas, hook them. Atlanta, Georgia, Boston, Aruba, Arkansas. All right. Welcome. India up late at night. We appreciate that. Platinum user. Okay. Troy, Bridget, Seb, my CPA bought Doge. Is it time to fire him? Well, let's not fire anybody, all right? Let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at how you should adjust your portfolio in the market, okay? We have South Kalaki, Portugal, and Preston, along with our friends from Estonia and Montreal, Canada. Okay, people, let's do it. This is what you came here for. Let's get busy on your market update. Okay, here it comes. My enemy, your enemy. Your enemy is the failed rally. Your enemy is also the weekend freak out. All right, so what you're witnessing in markets today, I woke up, I went to bed last night on the 10th of March. Okay, ETH down 2%. Wake up, ETH up 2%. You know, eat breakfast, eat down 2%. So the failed rally and the weekend freakout trade are in effect. Stay right here and I'll tell you what it means. Tokenmetrics.com has had three winners and is recommending PAX Gold on our ratings page. It's also been able to catch the moves in Luna. During Women's History Month, right? For a 10% discount, you can get a 10% lifetime discount if you subscribe and don't cancel. The code is women in crypto 10. W-I-C 10 is the code. All right. There's only one way to find small cap gems and big macro themes with a click of a button. And that's with token metrics. Let's go to stocks. Now, Crypto trades 24 seven stocks close on Friday. Now, why would I state the obvious? Because all the announcements, all the shockers, all the sanctions, right? All the stuff that the American and Western and NATO side do. Okay. 
A lot of that happens on weekends when the market's closed. So if the war escalates, right, as it's probably going to, because I understand that the Western side has been caught with a possible bioweapons lab or research somewhere in Ukraine, right? Fantastic news for de-escalation, not. The stock market is understandably freaking out. On the chart, it went to 4297, right, which was a hidden pivot point, stopped cold, turned around and failed badly. Okay. So the downside target is either 4151, which is where it bounced from, or it's as low as 4,000. Stocks are all always doing, I'm sorry, are also doing a series of ones and twos. Okay. Start, stop. Start, stop, start, stop. Now, when you have that three times in a row, you normally get a big move, okay? So there is legitimate fear and equities of a major, major down move. And that's why crypto isn't going up when it should be, frankly, right? ETH ran into chart resistance at 2,700, okay? Bitcoin ran into resistance at the even number at 40K. And I think people sell crypto or short crypto going into weekends worried that there's going to be some kind of event, right? Honestly, I should have thought that yesterday, along with the fact that when Dash is up, the whole market goes down. More on that later. Okay, Chinese equities crashing. This is FXI. Chinese stocks trading in Hong Kong, they're crashing, most likely signaling the likelihood of a global recession. How do we go into a recession? Well, the price of things goes up so high that it destroys demand. That's it. It's called demand destruction, right? There's also the idea that there could be problems with banks or, or all kinds of other stuff, right? The whole legacy fear trade is like so real that the crypto market can't trade the future of money, right? So if I had a perfect crystal ball, you know, yesterday I would have been like, well, you know, 2,500 is support. I don't want to be short. I still don't, right? But we have to get real about what's going on in equities and make the right portfolio adjustments. ARK, okay? ARK is the altcoins of the stock market, right? There was a technical point at 60 even, ARK tried to get through it, failed, okay? Now, ARK could go to 40, all right? So, you know, if you have risk, all right, of, you know, I don't know, a 15% decline in the altcoins of the stock market, you have to make crypto portfolio adjustments regardless of what we think about, you know, ETH being cheap relative to inflation. Now, it'd be great if we could buy it and there would be no problem and there'd be a relief rally on Monday. That's one possibility, but we don't know that, right? Because of all this war uncertainty going into the weekend. QQQ, NASDAQ 100, same picture, right? Rallied right to a chart point at 334. And now, you know, the next support point, if it turns around and goes down, is at 300. Now, with that said, it is not paid to buy on up days and it is not paid to sell on down days. Now, the unfortunate thing is these ranges that the markets have been in, they keep getting narrower, right? So first it's like, buy it when everyone's selling it at 34K. Yay, it goes up to 45. All right, sell it up there. It goes down, all right? Now what's happening is, it's almost like you can buy it when it's down, but then it goes up and you got one day to sell it before it goes back down again. So that's exhausting, particularly if you're doing a daily TV show, honestly, and if you're trying to make portfolio adjustments once a day. Now let's go to Bitcoin. 40K was resistance. Okay. 38K is probably support. We'll go to the DeMarc work in a minute. The fact of the matter is, People are selling rallies and you have to be afraid of failed rallies. You don't have to freak out, okay? But I think you do have to make portfolio adjustments 
based on the fact that, you know, bears are trying to take control of crypto. All right. ETH. 2,700 stopped the market. That was the top of a triangle formation. It's a four-hour chart. It's been up in that 2,700 area twice and couldn't get through it. And as you can see, that range in ETH is narrowing. So if it breaks out on the upside, awesome. If it doesn't and there's a problem with equities, okay, even though 2,500 is support, you know, you've got to start asking yourself, can I tolerate the risk if I come in on Monday and crypto and equities are on their way to drop in 10%, right? You have to watch out for like the weekend worry trade. So I'm not saying get out. I'm not saying get bearish. I'm not saying sell support. What I am suggesting is manage risk. We'll go into the details later. Now, just to, to drive the point home, right? This is the eight hour chart of Ethereum where I'm going to bed worried. I'm waking up happy and then I'm sitting down at my desk going, oh my God, right? That's that failed rally candle with the black arrow. Failed rallies are your enemy in a bear market. When you see failed rallies, you have to take note. Now that sucks for me because I like crypto down here on support. And maybe they're just trying to scare me out. But failed rallies have been your cue to exit or hedge. So we have to take it seriously. That's all. We have to take it seriously and manage risk. Now let's talk about Rune. Okay. Rune, right? The altcoin that, you know, <laughs> I hate to love, even though I think it can go much higher. The question is, can they execute? Right? They're releasing some new fundamental information, right? You got a really nice new high in price, but you really didn't get a new high in stochastics. So obviously you don't want to FOMO in at six because the last time you tried to FOMO in at six, you got hosed. Now, if Rune breaks out above 606, awesome. It's just going to keep going. But you have to respect resistance for the moment. Same thing in Near, right? Near went to 12, right? And I thought it was going to take out, right? I thought it was going to take out 12. It should have, right? It broke through all the, triggered all the Williams momentum signals, but it couldn't do it. Not only could it not do it, but it turned around and failed. <clears throat> the Williams oscillator indicator on the eight hour chart is now even. Now, when it's even, when it's like at zero, when you see that black arrow in the bottom right hand corner, that means Nears gearing up for a big move. Naturally, it'd be nice if it was an up move, but we have to consider the possibility, right? That you may get near at lower prices. Okay. So it's not a flip flop, it's a reaction to a failed rally. Okay. Dash, you know, every time you get the buy signal in dash, the mark dash goes up and the market goes down. I think even if it goes to 400. I, it, maybe it is going to go to 400 because I'm officially retiring, you know, looking at Dash for any other reason to say when it pumps, the market dumps. Okay. Solana. All right. Solana at 80. There are a lot of Williams fractal points near 80. What does that mean? Well, that means if Solana takes out 80 hard, venture capitalists are going to sell. So if you're holding Solana, you are praying to the God of your understanding that it holds 80 because if it doesn't, it could trigger a technical cascade. Now Solana has been flying back and forth in a range between 80 and 87. It is not paid to sell Solana at 80. All right. But I do remember somebody who said, Hey, I de-risked at 88, right? Bless his heart. It went to a hundred, but now look where it is. It's at 80. What does that mean? That means adjusting your portfolio to fit your own psychological and financial needs is necessary. And it's more necessary now that stocks look like garbage. God, I hate stocks for so many reasons. Okay. Zcash. All right. Speaking of what pumps and then lets the market dump, fundamentals in Zcash may be changing. All right. 
I hope so, right? If Zcash is above 138, all right, Zcash is okay. If Zcash is below 138, then we have all been faked out once again. Luna, very important technical pivot point at 92. So Luna makes a big new high, okay? I think it can go higher and then it turns around and goes right back and sits on a key pivot at 92. Now that new high was not confirmed by a new high in momentum indicators. That's the bottom graphic. All right. So if you've been long Luna, you have to say, all right, if 92 holds, it can go to 140. If it goes below 92, then I got to start moving my stop up. So I don't think it's time to get bearish Luna, but I do think it's time to admit that if it's below 92 and there's crappy news over the weekend, that if you need to take profits or you need to adjust your position, do so. This is a highly rated coin on token metrics. So that's why I'm not giving up on the trend because, you know, the, the token metrics rating is still above 80. Now for token metrics subscribers, instead of having to worry whether or not you've got the right pivot point or not, using that token metrics rating that when it drops below 80, you get out, or if it stays above 80, you can stay in, in a decent trend, can be a useful tool, right? Tokenmetrics.com subscriptions can save you, it can make you gains, and they can save you losses. Avalanche, all right, I know there's guys out there with Avalanche. Unfortunately, it went to a resistance point or a pivot point near 77.20 and a failed rally. So if Avalanche takes out, say, 70, right, then you have to start asking yourself, is this the right coin to be in? For the moment, it has not paid to panic down here at 72. So let's not panic. But you have to ask yourself, okay, it didn't get above 77. Buying strength has not worked. I tried it a couple times myself and got hosed, right? The only trade I did this week that worked was, you know, grabbing Bitcoin around 38,600 and got rid of it around 42. And then anytime I tried to buy the breakouts in layer one, it didn't work. And that is the market update. All right. Taz is buying more avalanche. Okay. Let's get on over to the DeMarc work. All right. So ironically, we have two groups of people who watch the stream. We have people who come in for the PowerPoint. So we want to say thank you for coming in for that. Please stay tuned if you'd like to hear more. We have also got people who rush in to get requests met. So I would like to welcome all those people who come in a half hour or an hour into the stream to check out what's going on. All right. Night Ghost says, AVAX, big update coming. King says, I'm here for the DeMarc. Excellent. I'm here for you. Okay. Omar said, I sold Rune at 610, waiting for an entry. All right. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Kuala Lumpur is here. Okay, we have IOTX as a sleeper. That's possible. That is clearly possible. Okay, somebody says on Luna, when you say hold 92, does that mean on a daily chart? Yes, right? You, you want to see Luna closing at or above 92. Okay, Bradford England is here. Okay, Christian is reminding you to smash the like button. Somebody is saying, oh my God, sell everything. Okay, if I was in equities, I would say, oh my God, sell everything. If I was in crypto, I would get rid of short uh, of shit coins, okay, and be prepared to make portfolio adjustments if it goes down. I'm not selling it into perceived support with ETH at 2,500. If I get stopped and we have to turn around and unload, fine, then we have to unload. Stocks, I'd be out. Stocks, honestly, I'd be short. 
and I'd let the dollar go up on any stock freak out, let the dollar go up, okay, and then buy gold. Because RAI still likes gold. All right. All right. Steve says, since the whole thing is debt, since the whole thing is based on debt, then the stock market is a derivative of the debt market. Wait for the debt market to explode, but the Fed won't let that happen. All right. They'll just print again. All right, Steve, good point. I'm going to talk about what's going on in the corporate bond market. All right. Printing more is good for crypto. Yes, it is. That's why crypto is a tricky game. Is it the future of money? Everyone's talking about a recession, right? Our token metrics newsletter this week, Navigator, is going to be about recession probabilities and crypto. So you want to subscribe and check that out. Okay. And I'm writing down the top requests here. Okay. Engine 9, we hear you. We're going to check it out. All right. Let's jump into the DeMarc first. Okay. We have Bitcoin on the four hour chart. All right. Nothing positive here or nothing negative on the sequential work. Just support at 38,100. That's it. Resistance was at 40, where the moving averages were, and support is at 38. That's it. Right? Same thing in ETH. You know, 2,700 was the resistance. It's actually 2,660. Right? And supports at 2,525. And we just have to wait and see what happens. If I had like a grand prediction, I would give it to you. All of the charts in Bitcoin and Ethereum are, are like neutral. I think the only chart that I honestly don't like, all right, I don't like the fact that the range in ETH is narrowing, right? In other words, there's like a million reasons to like ETH. And as I've joked, as I've joked on the show, Frequently, when I do a whole bunch of charts, sometimes there can just be one reason. There can be one chart. It's a one chart market update. This may be the one chart market update, okay? Because, you know, as ETH narrows, the closer ETH gets, right, to this apex, okay, the more violent the eventual breakout. That's it. Right. So ETH keeps making higher lows. I'm sorry, lower highs, right? Low, you know, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Right. Here it is on the 240 minute chart, right? So 2550 is support. Breaks 2550, you have to make portfolio adjustments. Period. Okay. Right. Because this nine top could be, it could, could be the real deal. I thought this nine top would produce a temporary dip and then a rally. We did get a rally, but it's a failed rally as of now. All right. Let's go to somebody was asking about debt. Okay. I know it's not your favorite subject, but I noticed this and it's worth talking about. Okay. LQD is corporate bonds. Now, the good news is, Corporate bonds have got a 13 bottom. Corporate bonds should go up. That means rates could go down and corporate bonds could go up. So we hope so. That would be awesome for crypto. If everybody bought stocks, right, and bought corporate debt. Okay, junk bonds, HYG, not quite the 13 bottom, but notice you got the 13 bottom and it's still going lower. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, because if corporate bonds don't go up and stocks start to go down, then you have to make portfolio adjustments. All right. Now, I know enough of legacy. You don't want to hear it. I got it. All right. Let's go to crypto four hour DeMarc chart. Okay. Steven says, sell every rally. King of Africa says, Ave, please. Okay. Now we have Luna four hour chart. Okay. Luna having a tough time. There's a nine top. 
right? And resistance at 106. So sellers obviously came in and hit this thing. Let me see if I can go to the daily chart. All right. Honestly, the point where I'd be stopping out of longs is 87. So remember how I told you if it's below 92, move your stop up. I'd move it to 87. Because if this, if this is like, you know, all the winners, you know, in other words, if, if legacy goes down, funds or crypto funds or macro funds that hold crypto start selling their winners. Now, if there is an exception, if there is an exception, it might be Cosmos. Okay. Cosmos has got pretty good support at 27. I don't see anything good or anything bad here. All right. All right. If Cosmos goes down, you would probably DCA at 2440. All right. Let's look at Solana. All right. The good news about Solana is that there's a 13 bottom. Okay. The bad news about Solana is it seems to just continue to go down, right? There was a 13 and a nine bottom here. You had this awful decline and then a bounce to 89, right? Right. That's where our, one of our listeners got out. There's another 13 bottom in Solana. And what did you get? I tried to get long. I got stopped out in like three hours. <laughs> you know? It, layer ones are trading like they're over owned, right? So if ETH takes out 2,500, don't get stubborn. Okay. You can DCA if you're going to hold it for a very long time. Okay. Support is 76. But when it comes to DCA, go back and look at the Bitcoin chart in 2018 of, of how long it took to get gratification from DCA. In other words, do you want a DCA at 80? Or do you want to DCA at, say, much lower prices if that happens, right? Sometimes making a portfolio adjustment means adjusting your thinking, right? It means adjusting your thinking. Okay, near protocol, right? There's the 13 top. There's the rush up to 12 on the four-hour chart. Now, support's all the way down at 840. I know that's a long way off. Right. But I think the unfortunate fact of the matter is every time near has a 13 bottom, right? It doesn't go up or it goes up and it stops, right? What's your enemy in this type of a market? The failed rally, the failed rally. Okay. Let's take a look at STX because I know that there was a pump in this recently. My understanding on this is it's like DeFi, it's like Bitcoin DeFi. Okay, let's see where it's trading now. All right, so again, the value of DeMarc. Okay, the resistance was at 186, right? So it gapped up there and stopped. Let's look at the four hour chart. Okay, four-hour chart's pretty convoluted. Let's go back to the daily. Now, again, just as an example, you got the 13 bottom, but you had to wait. And that may be what's going on in the market. You don't know because of this whole war thing, right? You don't know. Like ETH, 2,500. Okay, that's like the pivot for the whole market. Or like Bitcoin, like 38 and change. That's the pivot, right? Above it, okay. Below it, eh, right? Okay, Odin wants to know if DOT is done. Yesterday, I would have said no. If anything, DOT was looking like it wanted to wake up. But again, everybody seems to be in a hurry to sell stuff when it goes up. Right? I mean, this is going to get repetitive. But, you know, DOT does eight hours up and eight hours back down again. All right, let's go to the requests. I know we got some Cardano going on. Wow, you know, I interviewed the lady that wrote this book, The Cryptopians. Woo! 
I saw on her Twitter, I got to go back and reread some of that. I saw on her Twitter that the Cardano people are going ballistic, right? So she must have said some not nice things about the guy that is running Cardano. All right, here on the show, we don't we don't take one side or the other. All right, but but small reminder to be nice to our fellow crypto people. All right, four hour chart. Okay, again, Cardano makes all these bottom signals over here with the thirteen and the nine. It makes bottom signals here. It tries to go up. What's your enemy in this market? The failed rally. Okay, now the good news in Cardano is that there may be one more kind of climactic puke or just small sideways down day to give you a nine bottom. So if you're trading Cardano headed into the weekend, this is what you want to look out for, okay? You want to look out for one more down day or one more sideways down day. Then the next rally, okay, is either, it's got to be a real rally because if it's not a real rally, this whole thing could turn over, right? Not because Cardano is no good, just because, you know, if equities lead the way, the dollar goes up and it doesn't matter what we think about crypto, the charts are going to break down. Okay. Let's go to Gala in the metaverse. So <laughs> it's ironic, right? So <laughs> there are some, this is render, by the way. So I've been looking at the metaverse. I'm like, wow, here's the 13 bottom. Here's the nine bottom. Here's some good candles. And then what happens? Boom. So render hasn't gone anywhere for like nine days, but you may have to start making adjustments in the metaverse, right? Like here's the 13 bottom in sandbox, right? Great support at say 272, you know, really hard to get negative sandbox with that kind of technical picture really hard. Okay. All right. Unless you see the thing crack. Now there's no way sandbox should crack based on that technical picture. All right. If anything, sandbox should go up. Right? <laughs> Same thing with Decentraland. Now you have to keep this in mind though. This is going to be, you know, there's a 13, a nine, a 13, a nine, and now there's another 13. So you've got all these bottom signals between 230 and 235. So under those conditions, you might be like, wow, you know, the central land is going to go up. Let's hope it does. Okay. Let's hope it does. Right now, your attitude kind of has to be, show me the money. Now, if you got high conviction in these coins, okay, this is the area to get involved and your downside risk is say 206. Right. So if, if you buy it now, you're wrong. It'll go to 206. My, my guess would be wait until Monday. Don't try to mess around with crypto over the weekend because that's when they're going to be dropping literal bombs and bombs on the news. Right. All it has to do is escalate. All Putin has to do is use a cyber attack, turn out the lights in Poland, and all of a sudden everyone's freaking out. Okay. Let's go. We wanted Gala. Okay, so as we discussed, I have a hard time being negative metaverse coins, mainly because of the DeMarc work. There's a 13 bottom, small rally, a nine bottom, almost no rally, but there's a lot of support, right, at 20 and a half cents. So what does that mean? Well, it means I don't want to sell support, but you need to get real about your portfolio. You just need to get real about it. Okay. So there's Gala sitting on a really nice support point at, I don't know, right, probably right at 21 cents. Should you sell Gala at 21 cents? No. Not investment advice. Should you be concerned and make portfolio adjustments if Gala cracks over the weekend, rallies back to 2100 and fails? Yes, right? Because Gala is, is in this failed rally group along with everything else.
Okay, somebody wants me to explain the importance of available supply and circulating supply and what impact it has on a project. Good question. So when venture capitalists and a lot of tokens are locked up, right? When they get unlocked up, venture capitalists frequently unload because, you know, they bought the token for pennies and now it's trading at $80. So they don't care. They just sell. This is probably what happened in Audius, right? Internal selling, right? Crushed the market. It never came back. Okay. Avalanche could be the same thing. When you get these unlocks, all right, the market can turn around and just go down and it can't absorb the supply unless the crypto market is rallying. All right. Wrong again says I'm not buying Gala until 17 cents. All right. Steve actually wants to take a look at Perp. Another altcoin I hate to love. Purpose is a decentralized derivatives exchange. Okay. So, perp, you know, there's the nine bottom, there's the 13, right? That's actually on the daily chart. Sometimes perp can have a mind of its own, right? And sometimes it can pay to buy perp after they have just destroyed it, which as you can see, they have. Perp has a high staking reward. So, no staking rewards you know, when they hit the market, okay, perp can really get smacked. So here's the 13 bottom, here's the climactic puke, and here's bulls and bears duking it out below four. Okay, if you look at a perp weekly chart, let's see if I got anything on the weekly. Okay. That is one chart that they have to debug. All right, let's go to more requests. Okay, let's see if I got HBAR in here. I know people were asking for that. Okay, it looks like we have Amberly praying to the God of her understanding. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. I'm looking at this failed rally and I'm like, I'm like, shit. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so H bar is dipping, and, and this is this is kind of typical, right? So H bar is in like no man's land. Support is at twenty cents. There's a thirteen bottom. You got a rally, but again, it's not. It's failing. Now you got failed rallies up here, but you got the mark signals, and it held. This is the four hour chart. So I don't know. Do you have to lose your mind? No, but. Nobody is willing to pay higher prices, right? Every time this thing goes up, every time it tries to make, it does make higher highs, but everybody seems to be in a hurry to sell it. So something has to happen where the sellers have to run out of ammo. Now, maybe they push it down to 20 cents and they can't push it lower. Or maybe stocks collapse on Monday, and then you have to make a portfolio adjustment. People, I'm telling you right now, even though I, I, I presented the bullish case for crypto all week, I have also presented the idea that the market update show could be five minutes. No shit coins, okay? And sell everything when Dash and Zcash rally. That's it. <phone rings> Quitting time. Now, I want to give you more context than that, but sometimes it is that simple. Make the adjustments over the weekend if you have to because of what's going on with stocks. So there's a difference between being awake and aware and freaking out. Now, Zillica, nice rally off of a 13 bottom or almost a 13 bottom, okay? Spikes up to resistance at 0.043 and comes off. Now, is this, is this a retracement, right? Or, is this like the downtrend renewing itself because the uptrend failed? Okay. My sense of this is when we look at a daily chart. Okay. So we got the nice 13 bottom. All right. So I can, I can give it to you both ways here. Let's say you really, really like Zillica. Let's say you really liked Zillica, right? And you were like, you know what? 
if Zilliqa attempts to do like a bump and run and get down, I don't know, like basically where the low is right now, this is a daily chart, then I'm going to buy the dip. I like Zilliqa. I'm adding to my position. I'm buying the dip. If that was your thinking, you would probably do it now. If it doesn't work, turn around and stop out. It's as simple as that, right? Buying strength has not worked. Buying weakness might work, okay, if ETH holds 2,500. You're watching this video over the weekend, right? I'm trying to give you as much information as I can to last two days, all right? Okay, Aiken says, what about the $5 trillion that's sitting on the sidelines? Yeah, exactly, man, right? That's why I just cannot, I cannot bring myself to get negative on crypto. But the fact of the matter is, right, no matter how much money is on the sidelines, there's a ton of money invested. Equities are worth two and a half times GDP. Okay, so let's just check what's going on in ETH, right? Still kind of a gross failed rally look to it, right? I I'm hoping that by the end of today, ETH can actually recover. Because I'm not interested in seeing ETH below 2550 just, just to do a, like a midstream reminder. Because we have people who come flying in, right, looking for, you know, Bitcoin and ETH midstream. So, you know, forgive me if it looks like I'm repeating myself here. Okay, 38,138 is support in Bitcoin. 25,025 is support in ETH. And I don't care how bad stocks look, I'm not selling it down here. Now, if it doesn't work, you know, you can wait until somebody else can buy it, but I'm not puking it into support. I'll puke it out if it goes below support. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of examples. Like here, it broke support and then it puked lower. Right. Don't sell support. Right now, again, the trouble is the trouble is why you have to be awake. The range is narrowing, right? Support and resistance resistance is getting lower and support is getting higher. So the bar that it has to jump over is just flat out higher. Okay. Let's see if I got L Y X E. Okay. I don't let's go back over here. L Y X E. Okay, so this is like a four hour chart. Let's look at the four hour chart. Okay, this is Lusco. Okay, so this looks like some sort of consolidation formation. Okay. <clears throat> now, what you want to pay attention to is where these moving averages are, where the Williams alligator moving averages are. See how down here, when they expanded out, this went up, okay? Right now, they're pointing in the other direction. So, yeah, this is going sideways. I don't think you have to freak out about it. You know, I think you'd maybe get upset if you saw, you know, if, if you saw this below 1266 and didn't come back above it, then you're like, okay, maybe I got to worry. <clears throat> but right now, this is not... It's not bearish, but it's not going to moon right now based on charts unless something fundamental happens. All right. Somebody was asking for Ave, right? I know we got people hurting out there in this. Okay. Lo and behold, I had Ave all queued up. All right. So this speaks to the pain of it all, right? 13, nine bottom, $15 rally. Okay. Hits resistance, goes through resistance, fakes everyone out. Awful. Back down, nine bottom. Counter trend move, right? Remember, fans of the show, you get a DeMarc nine. Okay. That's the, in, that's called the setup phase. Certain number of conditions get counted. Like the low is lower than the low three days ago. We don't need to know the quant stuff. 
We just need to know the signals and how to trade them or try to use them as best we can, not investment advice. So when you go one through nine, that's called the setup phase. Now in a range, that's kind of how it works. You know, one through nine, bottom, one through nine, top. Now, if you're in a trend, it's one through nine, bottom, two day bounce, and then one through 13. All right. Now we don't know that that's the case here, but I don't like the fact that this thing made a nine bottom and then just kind of, you know, rolled over. Not a particularly good sign. It's not horrible. You have support Nave at $11.90. So should you puke it at 115? Honestly, no. Not investment advice. Now, should you adjust your portfolio if it goes below 112? Probably. Okay? There's no reason, reason to get totally wrecked. You don't have to sell it into support. Also in Ave, I'd be keeping an eye on ETH. If ETH falls apart, make the adjustment. If not, you might live to fight another day on Monday. Because, you know, now I'm talking about, okay, everyone's doing the oh my God trade on Friday. Well, if there's no oh my God over the weekend, then there's a relief rally on Monday. And that's just how we're playing the game. That's not charts, right? That's just, that's the psychology of trying to figure out a market in the middle of a war. Okay. KDA. Okay, so we have some very powerful price action today in KDA. So let's take a look at the eight-hour chart. And let's see what we, what we can find. Now, if we look at the Williams work, okay, KDA should have gone higher after it took out 809. But that brought in sellers, okay, if I was long KDA, I would only be happy if it held above 702. Because the only thing worse than a failed rally is a big failed rally. Okay. Now, I don't think I have. I check every day. Right. I don't have the DeMarc work on that particular coin. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. One of the things I like to tell people is it's a reminder that it's a bear market, <laughs> right? It's a bear market until it's not. And if this is some kind of flag, right, on the eight-hour chart, then you have to be careful, right? Like this thing was trading at $4 in January. Now the market will give you seven. Now what, what is saving you is that these moving averages are all tangled up. So the, there's nothing to do here based on charts, right? I mean, failed rallies are bad, but it did moon first. So if you wanted to sit and do nothing and see if it takes out seven, that's cool, right? That's cool. But if you see all the way up and fail, then the market's telling you something about your coin. Okay, KNC, I know this is a big token metrics coin, I believe. All right, so if we look at KNC, we have this similar thing that we had in Luna, right? Like our system has been on this, I believe, for quite some time. Our system rode this trend all the way up. You have a big new high and, and a lower high on that 13 day RSI. So I would say it's time to head for the door, right? If you make a good trade in this environment, particularly if you're long, you got to pay yourself. Okay. You got to pay yourself. So this is Kyber, right? All right. So it made a nine top at 330 and it's making a nine bottom at 260. So if you were mega long all the way up, your trailing stop would probably have to be between two below 229. Let's look at the daily chart. And let's also bring up the smart stochastic over here, which frequently the DeMarc smart stochastic 
gives you a, a very, a very different read sometimes. Okay. No signals off that, but all right, again, here's the 13 top. Here's the ramp to the sort of, you know, the 13 tops. They'll give you like a point where in case there's like a blow off, right? In case it goes past the 13 top, Kyber went right there at 325 and now it's breaking support at 259. Okay. So if you want to start moving your stop up, now would be a good time. If you want to take the money and reevaluate Monday, feel free. Okay. Phantom. Cause I know someone's going to, someone's going to ask, this is an epic pain trade. All right. There's a lot of support around a dollar 15. This is the four hour chart. Okay. I'm looking at the daily. All right. The daily is starting to look like people are giving up, right? <laughs> Almost impossible to rationalize selling it at the old low at a dollar 15. So, you know, a value investor who wants to bet, right? That ETH holds 2,500 over the weekend would probably start grabbing Phantom at a dollar 15. Sounds insane, right? In other words, so, sometimes, sometimes you got to take a gamble when people are giving up. Okay. Let's see if I can get Orion because I saw somebody, I saw somebody asking for that in the comments. Okay. FTM will pump after coin bureau covers it. Okay. That's interesting. That's definitely an interesting comment. All right. Steve J wants total two for, for swing traders. I'd be happy to not, not often you see somebody asking for total crypto market cap minus Bitcoin. Okay. So total crypto market cap for swing traders. All right. The first thing you have to pay attention to is, you know, these Williams moving averages still point down. Okay. They still point down. Now that's unfortunate because I wanted ETH to turn around because ETH would lead total two, right? Total two is total crypto market cap without Bitcoin, but ETH can't get going. Okay. Let me draw this. Yeah. I mean, if total two is below 950 billion, then we have a problem, right? It's been down here a couple times it's held. So this is just like, this is just like ETH at 2,500. You know, it's tempting to say, all right, it looks horrible. Everyone's selling. Let's buy it. Right. And if you're wrong, you have to make portfolio adjustments because if you're wrong, you're going to be wrong because of equities. Okay. Axia coin cannot die according to one of our, according to one of our, our viewers. <laughs> every day we pull this up, right? Every day we pull this up and every day it's a little higher. Okay. Now, every time we say that kind of stuff, what happens? All right. I don't know. This thing is very stretched out, right? It goes up every day. So what am I going to say about it? But, you know, if you see some big red reversal day on this, take the money. Now, if you don't, it's going to 1497. Been pretty consistent with that for a while. Okay. Okay, someone asking for one, that's Harmony, right? Maybe. Okay, Steve J's like, gotta hold 955, 958. I agree. 
Let's go back to total two for just one second. So I can see what Steve's talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have 950. Okay, someone's asking when the Q1 altcoin report is coming out. That's a good question. Okay, I will, I will definitely look into that. XRP will lead total two. Interesting idea. Always interesting to see what's going on with XRP. Right now, nothing, right? XRP is just getting dragged down with the rest of the market in this range that keeps narrowing. Personally, it's kind of bothering me that XRP cannot take out 79 cents. Matter of fact, you can clearly see people have been selling any move through there, including these gap moves all the way up to 90. So sellers have control of this thing until they don't. What's the worst trade I ever did in legacy? Uh, I got caught long at the top of a rally in the Chinese stock market. So I thought it was like going to be one of these QE style parabolics. I could bring the chart up. That's a shares. Okay. This is weekly. So I think the worst thing I ever did in my whole life. was probably I got caught being bullish right there. That was me. I got one last thrust higher and then boom. Now, the not so worst trade, I did get long down here, but I like doubled down up here and got smoked. That That is the worst thing I ever did in Legacy. Okay, let's go to Harmony. I understand there's very strong demand to hear not only about legacy markets, but legacy war stories from me personally. We're actually working on that. We're thinking about doing a weekend show where it's actually either all legacy or it's legacy driven. So that, that may be on the coming soon list because there's huge demand. There's huge demand for Bitcoin and ETH. And there's also this on demand technical stuff, right? Okay, so Harmony on the eight-hour chart. All right, so support is at 0.114. You know that already, though. All right, and it's hard to say anything bad about it if it's above this support point, right? But obviously, no one seems to have any interest in buying it right this second. Now let's go to like a four hour chart. Okay. See all these fractals down here. Okay. So if it takes out 12 cents, you're probably going to have that puke to 11, right? You got to be careful because it was probably a lot of hope on this rally, right? I was hopeful on that rally. That was like the seventh, the eighth, right? And then now people might be like, oh my God, I got to get out. So you got to be careful of like the capitulation trade. Okay. Dar. Someone's asking for Dar. And then I'm going to start wrapping it up here. Okay. So here's the Dar four hour chart. Okay, this is kind of interesting, right? In other words, there was a big new low here. Everyone seemed to give up, but momentum has been making higher lows. Now, what, what you need is you need for it to turn, okay? So people puked it, 
right? They gave up, they puked it. Now everyone's like, oh, wow, I just sold it below the low. The stops just got run. Let's bring it back. Now you got to ask yourself, okay, does it come back above that old low? Right? If it comes back, that old low is at 63 cents. If you start to see this thing turning around and above 63 cents, then you know this puke was a give up trade. Now, if you start to see this thing going up because of this momentum divergence, okay, it could actually really go up. I don't want to feed false hope. This is one of these trades where if you get into it, right, you want to get there as it starts rallying. Right, because of that momentum divergence. All right. Now, if it doesn't get back above 63 cents, okay, then bears have got control, bulls are giving up, and they're giving up for a reason. All right. Weekends are tricky. Let me see if I covered Orion. Okay, Orion protocol. No, somebody was asking in the comments about it. Okay, so. The four hour chart has got support at 296. All right. Now, so far, it's triggering some of these fractal signals, but it's not breaking. There might be some hope that maybe you get a return move to $3.14, but that's going to require a bounce. And that's going to cover the bounce, right, in ETH. All right. King is reminding me that I covered it already. All right. And that usually is a cue if I start repeating myself to wrap it up. All right. King said, I'm really getting hurt in Algorand. I think the venture capitalists are too. Right. right. Algorand is sold on every rally. Right. They just, they, I mean, I know that that is not what someone long Algorand is want to hear. But my understanding is, is that venture capitalists were very big on this. Every time it went to a dollar, that was the point where they wanted to get out. See, and this is what I'm talking about, right? There's the nine bottom, right? Which should lead to a rally, but it hasn't. It's led to a decline. So, you know, if you have to make a portfolio adjustment in Algorand, right? If you have to do something to make yourself sane, do it. Now, if you want to hang on a little while longer, Okay. No point. If you've been hanging on this long, right? The support is at 68 cents, 68 cents holds. You can say a prayer and hang on because <clears throat> Algorand's got a lot of cool stuff going for it. The problem is there's too many venture capitalists selling it. So if 68 cents holds, you can stay. If it doesn't hold, then you got to go. All right. So, you know, I know, I know not the best news, all right? But it's not a question of news or not news. The question is, what's your plan? And I'm telling you right now, folks, this is not going, this Ukraine thing is not going away. It is not going away. Vladimir Putin's not going away. It's not going away. So every weekend when you head into crypto from now on, it's what I'm telling myself from now on, every Thursday and every Friday, <clears throat> you work on the weekend plan. Then when the weekend's over with, we can go back to business on Monday before we got to worry about the weekend plan. The U.S. makes noise on Friday and Saturday, Putin makes noise on Sunday, right? To try to get the market to freak out on Monday. That's the, that's how it is. And we're going to see that from this point forward. All right, folks, that's the market update for this Friday, March 11th. All right. I appreciate you. If you like the content or I helped you out today, please hit the like button. Stay tuned next week for... You know, market update, the slideshow, market update on demand coming soon, market update legacy, okay? So we're looking at expanding the offering because we want to expand our viewership and most importantly, we want to help you. So that's it for me this weekend. Aiken, we appreciate the notorious love, all right? Ruben's going to rewatch the show. Steve, thank you, all right? Logan, appreciate you. Have a good weekend. All right, folks, that's it. We will see you Monday.